Subway claims to serve up low-calorie meals, but the truth is that a lot of the chain sandwiches have high levels of fat and sodium. From chicken that isn't chicken to 11-inch footlongs, here's how else the sandwich giant is misleading its customers. Subway is no stranger to the accusation that it serves mystery meat. Not too long ago, a Canadian news outlet conducted DNA analysis on the sandwich maker's chicken to find that the meat was only 50% chicken. Subway's latest protein controversy centers on the chicken of the sea. A lawsuit filed in California alleges that Subway's tuna is not tuna at all. The lawsuit states that the ingredient is a mixture of various concoctions that aren't tuna. That's insane. I mean, no tuna in a tuna fish sandwich? That's odd. It wouldn't be the first time a restaurant passed off one fish for another. But the most troubling part of this new allegation is the claim that what Subway is calling tuna isn't a cheaper fish substitute. In an interview with the Washington Post, an attorney for the plaintiffs claimed lab tests showed the ingredients were not fish. Subway denied the allegations, and the lawsuit was eventually dismissed in 2023. Subway received a particularly humbling piece of news in late 2020 when Ireland's Supreme Court ruled that the restaurant's bread wasn't actually bread. The problem, according to the court, is the amount of sugar Subway includes in its bread recipe. Ireland's Value Added Tax Act allows staple foods, including bread, to be exempt from certain taxes. But the law only allows the sugar in bread to be a maximum of 2% of the weight of flour. Otherwise, it's more of a pastry. Subway's bread recipe has five times more than the allotted sugar amount. Subway wasn't pleased with the court's ruling and issued a statement that said, Subway's bread is, of course, bread. We have been baking fresh bread in our restaurants for more than three decades, and our guests return each day for sandwiches made on bread that smells as good as it tastes. Subway was able to establish itself as one of the fast food giants by promoting itself as the healthier alternative to places like McDonald's and Burger King. But the healthy reputation isn't entirely accurate. In general, Subway does offer a wider array of healthy options than the average burger joint. But you need to be careful what you order and what you're adding on to that order. Although many sandwiches are low in things like sugar, they often have bloated fat and sodium levels. And the restaurant does its best to hide this. As one former employee explained to eat this, not that, when you walk into a Subway store, you'll see all of our menus have the calories listed with each sandwich. What you can't read is the small print on the menu, which specifies that these values are only for a six inch sub on white bread with no cheese or sauce. Therefore, you can easily be tricked into thinking you're getting a low fat, low calorie sandwich. But if you're ordering a footlong sandwich with cheese and sauce, you're roughly tripling those numbers. Restaurant customers are entitled to the reasonable expectation that their food is clean and won't make them sick. But if we are to believe former Subway employees, the sandwich chain doesn't always pass that standard. According to multiple former employees on Reddit, it's common for Subway to not wash the vegetables it serves. One ex-employee stated, Our manager told me not to bother washing or rinsing boxed vegetables like green peppers and tomatoes. At least a few of them are rotten every time. Another former employee had even worse stories to tell. In addition, to agreeing with the unwashed vegetable claim, they also said that the same slicer used to cut dirty vegetables was then used to cut deli meat without being washed first. One more food safety violation accusation involved olives and jalapenos, which the employee said come covered to the stores in bags. The person wrote, They taught us to hang the bag over the dishwashing sink while they drain. That means that while we wash the dishes using industrial strength sterilizer, your peppers and olives are getting splashed with it. Subway's famous tagline is Subway, eat fresh. However, the sandwich chain's advertising is more than a little misleading when it comes to the freshness of its food. One former employee wrote on Reddit, I worked at Subway. Nothing was fresh. Everything was frozen. Even the lettuce was pre-cut in a bag in the freezer. The meat, same deal. The bread was in little frozen dough balls. I don't understand how they can say, eat fresh. Another former Subway employee seconded the frozen bread claim, saying, the manager kept frozen unbaked bread for for over a year. It was so old that the yeast had died, causing the bread to not rise. It appears things aren't much better overseas. A subway worker in the United Kingdom stated a number of items sold at the restaurant are frozen. The worker wrote on Reddit, steak, chicken, chicken strips, bread, etc. comes frozen and is thawed before prepping and serving. The cookies are shipped to us in bags of frozen dough balls. They're cooked in store in our oven. 
Food expiration dates are undoubtedly confusing, and many people throw away perfectly good food simply because they believe it has gone bad. But by and large, those dates exist for consumer safety, something restaurants should take extremely seriously. According to Food Service Director magazine, the National Restaurant Association recommends its members follow the FDA food code, which states, the day or date marked by the food establishment may not exceed a manufacturer's use-by date if the manufacturer determined the use-by date based on food safety. All this is to say that restaurants should be adhering to the expiration dates their ingredients are given. But some Subway franchisees are doing the opposite. One former Subway employee wrote on Reddit, My manager was really conscious of food costs, to a fault. Most commonly was changing the expiration dates of food so it wouldn't have to be thrown out. This may not be a huge deal for a couple days, but food would last a couple weeks. The sandwich artist wasn't alone in announcing their warning. Another employee advised customers to specifically avoid the chicken teriyaki, writing, Subway chicken is given a two to five day shelf life depending on the variety. The chicken teriyaki should be thrown out by the fifth day, but a lot of employees just change the date to avoid throwing it out. They may differ slightly depending on the type you're making, but the main ingredients of bread are pretty simple and familiar, flour, water, and yeast. So when you come across an unpronounceable ingredient name like azodicarbonamide, there is probably cause for concern. And yet not long ago, that chemical was found in Subway's bread. In 2014, food blogger Vani Hari publicly chided Subway and demanded they remove the chemical, which can also be found in yoga mats. In bread, it is used to strengthen dough. In Subway's defense, it's a common commercial bread ingredient that was also used at other restaurants, including McDonald's, Starbucks, and Arby's. In addition, according to Subway and the American Bakers Association, the FDA had found azodicarbonamide to be safe. That didn't stop Hari from starting a petition to get the chain to remove the ingredient from its bread. The petition quickly gained more than 65,000 signatures. In the same week the petition launched, Subway announced it would be removing the ingredient from its bread, a process it said had begun prior to public lambasting. It has historically been a common practice among fast food restaurants to use preservatives and additives in their food, and Subway is no different. But few such eateries advertise their food as fresh, which makes Subway's actions a little more devious. In addition to the yoga mat chemical, some Subway breads had tasty ingredients such as sodium steroyl lactylate and ammonium sulfate, both used to help condition the dough. The restaurant's protein wasn't any better, containing artificial flavor enhancers such as autolyzed yeast extract, hydrolyzed corn gluten, and hydrolyzed soy protein. Those looking at Subway as a healthier fast food option will be happy to know the restaurant has said goodbye to these artificial ingredients. In an attempt to get closer to its Eat Fresh slogan, Subway announced in 2015 that it would be removing all artificial colors, flavors, and preservatives from its menu by 2017. Most fast food restaurant goers likely know the food they're eating may have things like additives and preservatives, but most probably also assume that the food they're eating is the food they ordered. In 2017, a Canadian news program claimed that if you're eating Subway's chicken, that assumption is wrong. An investigative team from CBC's Marketplace studied DNA analysis of several fast food restaurants' chicken sandwiches. The chicken from most eateries, including McDonald's, Wendy's, and Tim Hortons, were found to have between 80 and 90% chicken DNA. Not so much for Subway. The sandwich outlet's chicken was found to be only half chicken. So what did the rest of this hybrid meat consist of? The rest? Mostly soy. For its part, Subway strongly denied that accusation. The company even sent their chicken to two different independent labs, which found the samples to have less than 1% soy. Suzanne Greco, Subway's president and CEO at the time, said in the statement, the allegation that our chicken is only 50% chicken is 100% wrong. In 2013, two men from New Jersey sued Subway, claiming that the chain's signature item, the footlong sandwich, was just 11 inches long. It all started when a man in Australia posted a photo on Facebook showing a footlong sandwich next to a ruler. In response, Subway claimed that footlong was just an adjective and not used to state the exact size of the sandwich. It took two years, but Subway finally relented. As part of the lawsuit settlement, the chain was required to ensure that all of its sandwiches were the size advertised. 